just sitting out here on the swing this morning watching the birds and I've got a busy day ahead of me got lots of little things to do and I'm just gonna take you along with me and explain what I'm doing explain why I'm doing it maybe uh, maybe we can learn something from each other today the first thing on the agenda is to water these. So they didn't turn out too bad. There's some bald spots, but I had it filled with seed and then we got like a 20 degree night and it killed some of the stuff. I tried to replant, but you know, we're getting salads from it. We do the cut and come again from here. Problem is, is that it's underneath the eave of the house here. So when it rains, if it's not raining sideways, this does not get watered. So I have to water it, especially in the summer, on a very regular basis, so. But it is really pretty on the side of the house, is it not? Hey girls. Got some stuff for ya. Pretty yummy, huh? So I wanted to show you guys some of the things. Um, I got this really cool magazine from Tractor Supply um, about chickens. It's like a whole magazine about chickens. In it, it gives you all kinds of great information. Uh, one of the things is that you need to provide your chickens, especially if they're in an uh, enclosed area like this, you know, for most of their lives. They need to have enrichment and things to climb on. And so my husband built this really cool thing just out of like a scrap piece of wood that they can climb on as well as this over here, which I don't know if you can see it really well, but it's got some areas and they love to sit on the top of this right here in the mornings. I'm always watching them. Where are you guys going? Why are you going to bed? It's morning. Guess I'm encroaching upon their space. But um, Another thing that I'm going to put up in here is a mirror, but I gotta get like a, a one that's like safe, but they, I know they have bird mirrors. But I also got them a xylophone. I don't know if you saw one of my other videos. We got this like thing that they pecked at and they, it makes noise. And so I got them this and it actually, it's meant for a cage like what I have with the little hook. So I'm going to hook it up as well as I got another water. Now this one is not a heated because the one that's over in the corner there is a heated one. So in the winter, when the temperature drops below freezing, it will actually keep the water from freezing. Automatically kicks on and make sure that the water temperature doesn't freeze and crack your container. But this one here, I noticed that they are going through the water quite quickly. Eight chickens and it's getting warm outside. They're going through the water more quickly and I keep refilling it. Like I think I've refilled it twice a week, sometimes three times a week. So I got them another water, but this one is not I gotta put it up on um, a block. But it's got four nipples to it, and it's a two gallon water. And I think that should keep me from having to refill it as much.
are already curious about it. They're loving their new water. I don't think it's up high enough though. Forgot to show you my husband. There was one day where it got, I don't know, 92 something. It was pretty hot. And I noticed that one of my chickens was panting. And I got worried, so my, we had this fan down in the basement that we never use. So my husband kind of rigged it up here. And as soon as we turned it on, they found a spot down on the ground here where the wind was blowing and just laid in front of it. So they love it. So that's another new addition to the coop or the run, I guess. I also added a couple of just scrap pieces of wood because I read that they like to peck at old dead wood, rotting wood, because there's bugs and things that live in it. Another thing I'm going to do today is cover my peach tree and my blueberry bushes. Last year I had a ton of peaches on it and right as they got ripe they all disappeared. So either deer climbed up this hill and ate them all or squirrels or something got a hold of them. But I got this on Amazon. It's just this black mesh netting stuff and it is seven foot by 65 foot. So hopefully it covers the tree enough because I've definitely got some peaches on it and I would like to have those peaches and this is the first year my blueberry bushes you can see some blueberries there not a lot but there's some so this is a little bush that I had planted a few years ago there's another one I don't actually see yeah there might be a few blueberries back there but then there's one right here behind me right next to the hammock pergola and it's got several blueberries on it and then the one I planted out in the front it also has a bunch of blueberries and I'm gonna get everything covered because they're gonna be my blueberries because there's not a whole lot so since this mesh netting was only seven feet wide I wasn't quite able to cover the peach tree in entirety so what I did was I cut I think it was five long strips of it and then just laid it started at the top and layered over top of each other all the way around the peach tree and kind of used the branches to kind of stick through some of the holes to kind of hold it tight to the tree and then I did enlist my husband to help because I couldn't reach the top but after that I tied it with a piece of twine tight to the trunk around the bottom Look at that rose bush. I have such an issue with it though, with the disease. This black spot, but oh gosh, it's so beautiful. a nice bit of this roll left and I'm having an issue with something getting at my strawberries before I do so I'm gonna just lay this across the strawberry beds what I have left and see if that helps so 
hopefully that netting helps a little bit. I think I'm gonna buy another roll and go ahead and cover up this one and the other one. But I don't know if it's the birds. You see, right as they get ripe, something is pecking at them. So, I mean, it kind of looks like a bird. Could be a chipmunk. I'm not sure, but I want my strawberries. So, hopefully this netting helps. I feed the birds. I water the birds. So, they don't need to come and destroy my hard work. But, let's do some harvesting. I think we got some ripe ones in here that might not be messed with. Now, this bed. See, look at this. This is a runner. And they will just climb over this bed and then I can transplant them so, several of them see look at that whole bunch of them and they're just trying to find see they'll this is what they'll do they'll fall to the ground and then they root themselves so they're looking for some dirt to root themselves in and if I let this go this whole bed right here would be full of strawberries at a certain point. But I want this to be my squash bed, so I have to prevent that from happening. But I wanted to show you something else I saw yesterday. Where is it? Ah, here it is. Remember planting that asparagus? There's one. That's an asparagus spear. See how tiny it is? This is not something you'd want to harvest you'd kill your plant. So, that's the only one I see so far. I don't see any more, but hopefully I planted 20, 10 of each variety. But let's get some strawberries, morning strawberries here. So I'm just gonna like lay this bird netting and These are going to be delicious roasted. All right, here is that carrot bed that we planted together. And I want to see just how close together they are because I think they're too close. And I want to harvest some of them and see if there's any actual root, carrot root. Let's see. So let's get down in here. This row is the Uzbek Golden. So let's see. So these two are pretty close. These two are pretty close together. So I'm going to harvest one of them. So they're really tiny still. These two are pretty close together. So I'm going to harvest this one here. A little bit bigger. Let's see here. So this one can get bigger and I'll take this one since it's the bigger one. I'll take this one here in the middle and I think that'll leave enough space. So I'm just trying to make some space between them. Even though I thinned them out, I didn't really thin them out enough to give them enough space to get really big. So that's what I'm gonna go through and do right now. And you know, we'll just have some little mini carrots for our salad later, cause I'm gonna cut some greens too. Let's see what some other ones look like. Let's see what this Lawn Rouge Sang looks like. 
Some of these were supposed to be really pretty. All right, so these look like these three here are a little too close together. So I'm gonna take that middle one. Ooh, that's pretty. It's like bicolored, darker at the top. Let's see here. These right here are a little too close, these three. So I think I'm gonna take this one. Oh yeah, pretty. I can't wait to see these get really big. The Kyoto Red looks like. Well, it's not quite red yet, so maybe it doesn't get red till it's much more mature. This bigger one here looks like yeah. okay so the last row in the back let's see what these look like buried it is purple dragon okay let's see what purple dragon looks like kind of pretty See if I can find a bigger one. Ooh, that is pretty. That's purple dragon. Is a little too little. I'm gonna see if I can shove it back in the dirt. Back into the hole I pulled it out of. See if it'll transplant. Okay, and get bigger. So that's the very first one, so we'll see if that works. I'll pull this one. Ooh. All right, so I've got a few. Purple dragon. Those are really pretty. There's a Parisian. It's kind of like a little ball. Oh, here's a... This one looks like a big one. Let's get it from beside this one. Next up was stirring my 30-day compost pile. This is an experiment. I'm trying to see if I can make compost in 30 days with just three ingredients. That's another video that's coming up. Okay, so this is my sweet potato bed. I did a video on it, sweet potato slips, how to grow your own. But I started mine way too early. I started them, I think, like second week of January, third week of January. I got tons of sweet potato slips, but they were sitting in the house, I think, way too long. And then I was transferring them inside and outside, and I just don't think they liked it. Um, so next year, I think I'm going to start like six weeks later. I don't think I'm going to start till the beginning of March. Uh, because it only took a couple weeks to start getting sweet potato slips, and once I was getting them they were going like gangbusters now i had two like this and the other one rotted but this one is still good so i am actually going to just plant this whole potato in the ground because it does have a couple of little slips trying to grow on it and we'll see if we get anything i think i'm just going to put it right in this little so there's the whole bed and i think i'm going to just put it in this little corner here the ones that i planted last week all look like they're doing really well I've got those in the mail from Stark Brothers, and they have several different kinds of sweet potatoes to choose from. All right, so I've got the hay that I've kind of pushed off to the side. I'm gonna dig down in here. And then, let's see if I can take the whole thing out of here. I can't believe this thing hasn't rotted yet. So we're just gonna make sure it's contacted with the ground below it. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cover the whole thing. I don't know if that's necessary. 
make sure I press it down in there good, and then I'm going to put the hay back around it. And we'll see if anything comes to that one there. And then over here is the other potato patch. So I keep hilling these up and putting hay on top of them. It feels like every three days. And they are just booming. I love it. So cool. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to top with a thin layer of mushroom soil that I have. And again, cover with hay. So once I finished up with the mushroom soil, I started adding a layer of the hay. Now the hay I'm using has already started to break down some, but that's okay. You don't need fresh hay. That is all done. So I've scattered the hay, or I scattered the uh, mushroom soil, and then I just went around and I used the hay and kind of covered up covered up all the dirt that'll keep if there's any diseases in the mushroom soil the hay will kind of prevent the diseases from being as close to the actual vegetation what it looks like now this is what's called hilling up your potatoes so potatoes grow these plants just keep growing and these plants will just keep growing taller and taller so as they get taller, I'm trying to keep up with them and raise the dirt up more. Hopefully that will give me more potatoes. We're gonna find out. Then I went through and I was tying up my tomatoes to the trellis, as well as pruning the bottom leaves and the suckers off of the tomato plants. All right, so I've got them all tied to the trellis and the bottoms of them all nice and pruned up. Another thing that I'm doing this year is I'm trying to be, you know, have things close at hand so that I will do them. So I've got three of these little containers with twine, that, you know, like tomato tape and a pair of clippers or scissors to cut the twine or to cut branches if I need to. And I've just got them in these little containers and little corners of my garden. That way, if I see something needs done, I won't procrastinate doing it and forget about it because I'll have this close by. Because to go all the way back to the house is a bit of a hassle, but if I have it right here, I'm more apt to do it. Sorry my hands are filthy, but tomato pruning that's what happens they get stained I have one more bed I have to do that in and that is the third one down there the other two I have done okay so those two beds have been done looking great this one has not been done yet so I'm going to tie all these up and prune them Alrighty, so I have these all tied to the trellis to try to get them to grow up towards it instead of across the ground. So as these tomato plants grow, I'll just wrap, like wrap the tops of them very gently, like so, around the top of the plant. Which some of them are pretty close to just being able to tie the trellis, but some of them aren't, so... And there's my ground cherry. Looks like it's doing okay. Possibly a little flea beetle damage. One of the last things I'm doing today is planting up another row of tomatoes because I have this space. I am going to eventually put up a trellis here. Get like two more cattle panels and six or eight tea posts. So I'm going to get those. But I've planted this up. And then what I'm doing is I like to put this natural mulch wood mulch on the top so that's what i'm in the process of doing 
here mulching around these. I planted these up about four days ago, five days ago. And I gotta tell you, they were looking pretty rough. These I just planted today, these about six right here. But these I planted five days ago and some of them looked like they were on the brink of death, but tomatoes are resilient and they are looking good now. But as you can see, this is where I've ended up with the mulch, but I really like putting this natural mulch on it. It really retains the moisture, adds nutrients to the soil as it breaks down. And for whatever reason, I find that when I put this underneath my tomatoes, my tomatoes do better. So that is what I am doing today. And then I'm going to come back and all the pots that you see here, I don't have labels for. So I'm going to label all of them. But I just can't seem to stop planting tomatoes. I might even plant some more down there along that side and put a trellis up. Because I have a bunch of extras. I think I might do that.